So David, you are one of our leaders here at the U.S. Agency for International Development. Uh, on the work we do around the world to promote democracy, human rights, and good governance. But there's also another story about who you are, and that's that you started your young life in America as a refugee. Yes. We arrived in California in 1956 aboard the SS Woodrow Wilson. My family came as political refugees from China. My father had, had served both in the Nationalist Army, the pre-communist army, and then afterwards uh, started a movement that was based in Hong Kong called the Free China Movement, where he worked uh, with the vision of a democratic China. He did that for about five years, and when that disbanded, he was offered refugee status in the United States. You've said often before that part of what happens when your uh, emerges, emergence as an American uh, happens by dint of the fact that you have been a refugee is that you come to cherish in some pretty powerful ways the things that you have because you know what it's like to be denied them. But I think refugees in particular given our quest for freedom and a safe haven and a place to practice freedom in a way that our mother countries would not allow us to. That's really our gift and the gift of America to us is to allow us to practice that freedom, to allow us to lead in the movement for freedom around the globe in the ways that USAID and other parts of the US government do. And I remember 60 Minutes did a piece about a South Vietnamese general, it could have been my father, stocking uh, bottles of liquor in a liquor store in Van Nuys, California. And a light bulb went out, off in my head, you know, that, that's my dad and his first job in Stockton, California, when we settled all his refugees, was working in a Chinese grocery store probably 16 hours a day, stocking Campbell's soup cans. And I say that not to get your sympathy, but for him, it's more my pride than my father. He went from uh, being a military attaché and occupied, Allied occupied yeah. Berlin and toasting champagne with the Allies to s leading this underground movement to stocking cans in a grocery store, store in Stockton, California. He never once in my entire life has expressed anything but gratitude for his life. I'd like to tell you one other story about a, a South Vietnamese refugee that I had the honor of being able to help when I was at USAID during the Clinton administration. His name's Ka Van Tran. Ka and his <laughs> wife hitchhiked down I-95 and they told, they were in the Mid-Atlantic and they told the kind person that picked them up, drop us please sir somewhere where you think we can find a job. And so wow. he dropped them off at Springfield Mall. He gets a two hour, two dollar an hour job as a, a sweeper of floors. And then <laughs> ten years later he went on to become a chef and then a manager and then an owner of Tex-Mex restaurants and 10 years later wow. Ka owns five of these restaurants and decides being a South Vietnamese refugee means more to me than this so he starts a later AID supported NGO called Vietnam Assistance for the Handicap and he's helped today thousands and thousands of Vietnamese who have lost limbs uh, throughout Vietnam. There are so many stories of people who come and are so thankful and grateful and who, by the way, as in your stories, are helped by so many Americans mm -hmm. who I think are moved by that conviction and they end up giving back. These are the stories that, that we need to tell people because this is who we are.